All right, so we're going to kick it off with the PowerPoint here. Again, my name is Griffin Swanson from Professional Advantage, a channel product manager. Uh, as Macarena mentioned, if you have any questions during today's demonstration, certainly don't hesitate to ask those. We will have time at the end of the session uh, for our Q&A. We're going to kick things off with the PowerPoint here, go through some of the benefits to using collections management, and then we'll hop into GP. And I like to break the demonstration into two different parts. So the first part will focus in on more of your day-to-day -day collecting activities and centralizing your customer information. And then the second part of the demonstration will focus in on the automation process of collection. So I'll make that transition very clear. Just wanted to mention that before started as well. Well, let's go ahead and dive into this PowerPoint here. The first thing that I like to really do is highlight some of the problems customers are seeing when they're doing their collections today and how collections management would help solve those problems. So the first thing I want to mention here is there's a lot of decentralized information in the sales and accounts receivable areas in GP. One problem we see today is companies just don't have the ability to keep collection history on their customers inside of GP. So they may print off an H trial balance, keep some posted notes, or perhaps have shared an Excel file. The main problem with that is there's really no way to share those notes, conversations, or history with other users, at least not in GP. So collections management adds value in number one, the collections main window. So this is gonna be the command center for this product, and it's great for ad hoc inquiry. You'll use this main window for tracking and creating notes, setting up follow-up tasks, and creating actions on your invoices, such as promises to pay, or maybe it's in dispute. You're also gonna be able to access what we call a task window, which is essentially going to be your to-do list for this collections module. You can also see there that collection notes can be created from the main window as well. And the notes have historically been the hub of collections management, really the main functionality. They allow your users to create actions, keep history, and notes on your customer invoices. You're also gonna see those notes there act as a follow-up task. The second pain point that we see a lot of customers have is there's a lot of inconsistent follow-up when doing your collections. And with that follow-up, you're using a lot of manual communication. So our collection plans here allow your users to spend less time searching for customers, spend less time creating emails and attaching invoices manually. These workflows here, they're essentially a set of actions suggested automatically based on the due date of a customer's invoice. So you'll be able to use the predefined plans that we have set up with the product, or you can define your plans on your own from scratch, tailoring them to your different customer types. You will then process the action suggested by those plans in similar groups, one by one, or all at one time. And I'll show everyone that in today's demonstration. Lastly here, bottom line collections management is aimed to reduce your bad debt and improve your cash flow. So there are a number of performance reports that I'll go through here today. We have an accounts receivable summary window. There are some smart list and SSRS report templates that come with the product and also some individual collector performance reports built in collections as well. The last thing there with collections, it also calculates your day's sales outstanding. So that allows you to track your DSO over time and really measure the return on investment of this product. Now, the last two slides here kind of highlight that return on investment of collections and shows you how you can track your day sales outstanding. And really a good statistic to calculate your return on investment is your day sales outstanding. That's because your DSO is indicating how much you're selling and how fast you're getting paid. And then that can really indicate how effective your collection process is working. So the example I have here on this slide, just highlighting for simplicity reasons, let's say you're a $36 million company today. That's roughly $3 million a month or $100,000 a day. And let's say we implement collections management here using it as a catalyst to decrease our DSO. So the example I have here, let's say we decreased our DSO in year one from 45 days down to 40 days. So simply down by five days, that would result in another half million dollars in your bank account. Now in the same light here, here's a simple cash benefit analysis, which really just gives you a better idea of how much more money you could collect by decreasing your DSO. And then also based on some national averages on what's paid relative to two date, Here's what a dollar is worth in relation to days past due. So after looking at a few of these things here, it's easy to see why having a good collection system 
is important. But let's go ahead and dive in to GP at this time. All right, and just a few more notes here before we dive into the first feature. First thing I wanna mention is that collections management was designed to manage a collection team, but it's also a great collections tool in a single collector environment. You'll notice in the demo today that the navigation and visual queue features are the same as in other GP modules. So it allows you to work between those modules with ease. Now I do have my demonstration set up today in GP 2018. Current functionality is supported on GP 2018 and GP 2016. However, we do have code that goes all the way back to GP 10. I also have a number of shortcuts here on my homepage. That is just for demoing purposes today, but just know when all functionality in Windows are installed, they will reside here in the sales area inside of GP. And I'll drill back into this sales area a couple of times throughout today's demonstration. But let's go ahead and start with the collections main window here. Again, this is really gonna be the starting point for most of your collectors. I wanna show you the importance of these fields inside of this window. And then I also wanna demonstrate a number of actions that I can do from here as well. So let's just go ahead and kick things off here by selecting a customer by hitting that little magnifying glass there or your customer list. It's gonna show you all of your customers in GP. Now, if you click one of these customers here, let's just go ahead and choose Aaron Fitz Electrical. It's gonna pull open all of those customer details. A lot of this information here in the main window is being pulled right from Core GP. Again, there's a lot of decentralized information in GP today. And so what we did here is we said, okay, what's the important information when it comes to your collecting? Let's centralize that in one main window. So that's what we have here. You'll probably hear me reiterate that a couple of times throughout. So for starters, we have the customer name here, Aaron Fitz Electrical. We can set up different address IDs for this customer as well. So if there's a number of different locations that you need to be collecting from for one particular customer, this would allow you to do that. You notice here we have a contact person for that customer along with their phone and fax numbers. I can see the last time this customer made a payment and how much that payment was for. And then that's gonna be followed up by their payment terms here. So Aaron Fitz Electrical was on our net 30 payment terms. Salesperson at territory ID, again, just standard GP fields. And then we have the collection plan ID displayed here. So this will actually be a part of the second part of today's demonstration, the automation process. So we'll go through this plan later on in the demonstration, but just know if any of your customers are assigned to an automated collection plan, we will display that here in the main window as well. Year to date sales, this is just letting us know how big of a customer we're trying to collect from. And then off to the right hand side of the window here, we have our customers aging. Again, this is being pulled right from core GP. Every time you run that aging routine in GP, collection will update these buckets here. And the cool thing about this is you can actually drill into this and click display. It's gonna pull open a collections management transaction inquiry window showing us the specific invoice or invoices that fall under that specific aging period. We then have the total amount displayed here, or total due amount. That's gonna be the total amount of invoices that you've sent to your customer. So you can see what they owe you there. We'll drill back into this here in just a few minutes as well, but I wanna to touch on the notes first because they do tailor in to the total due window. Below that, we have a credit limit for the customer here followed up by three more hyperlinks called unposted sales, orders, and cash. Again, just drilling into some core GP windows here. For example, unposted sales, I could pull open this receivables transaction inquiry window. So that's core GP, as well as the sales or SOP document inquiry. Again, also core GP. We then have the total amount outstanding here. That's gonna be the sum of what's been invoiced to your customer, as well as unposted sales, and on posted orders. Finally, at the bottom here, you can see we have a credit manager. You can assign a customer to a specific credit manager if you'd like to. And a large group of customers can also be divided amongst a collection team if necessary. So this is my demo collection team, if you will. So that is the main window fields there. Again, we're really just grabbing a lot of that decentralized information from GP when it comes to your collecting, we felt this was important and one wanted to put it in one main window. But now I'm gonna drill into some of these actions here. And this is really where the collection functionality 
comes into play. So for starters, if you ever need to create a note for your customer, you can create a new note from scratch at the top of the window here and fill in the fields as well as the note text. But just to give you guys a better idea of how this actually works, let me go ahead and pull open a note that I've already created. So I'm gonna pull this off to the side actually here and then I'll center this in just a couple of minutes. When you guys create a note or any user for that matter, it is gonna save the date and time the user created that note. It also displays the caller ID here. This will be the actual GP user who created that note. You can then see we have an address and contact person here. That's just matching up with the details back on the main window. And then we can assign this note to a specific priority level. So three different areas or three different options there for a priority level. One of the areas we can filter these notes based off a of priority is building a query, something that I'll touch on later in the demonstration. And we've also color coded these notes as well. So if you look back on the main window here, you can see there's a color next to each one of these notes. Let me just scroll down a little bit here to show you each of those colors. So a low priority is gonna be displayed as this clear or white color. Normal priority is gonna be displayed as green. And then a high priority is gonna be displayed as red. So it kind of just gives you a visual representation showing you the priority of each note that you have. Center this again. At the bottom, we have the note text. So this is all open text fields here. You can type in whatever you want this note to read, and we'll even see customers copy and paste email conversations in here. On this particular note, we spoke to Bob Fitz. Bob was telling us he's gonna send a payment by early next week on a couple of invoices. So the next thing I wanna do here then is assign this note to an action. An action is something that you've done such as a reminder or a follow-up. Maybe it's the status of an invoice as well. For example, promise to pay because that's what Bob said he's going to do. Now, any of these actions here track anything that has occurred in the past or any actions that need to occur in the future. So let me just drill into this here and show you what those actions are. All right, so these are the different actions that I have here. It's just my action lookup. And a lot of these are really straightforward. We got checks in the mail there, sent to collections. Maybe an invoice gets too old, you send it to a collection agency disputing an invoice, so on and so forth. Now we have an action ID and description here. So these are all configurable. You guys will be able to come in and set up whatever actions make sense for your particular collecting practices or activities. Now each of these actions and descriptions here are categorized by an action type. And we have three different action types for you. Promise to pay, your customers made some sort of notion they're going to submit payment on that invoice special circumstance, anything deemed outside of your normal day-to-day -day collecting activities would fall under that. And then a third category being dispute. Now, maybe you're just going back and forth with that customer disputing what actually needs to be paid. Now, if you don't wanna categorize it with one of those action types there, you can just leave it blank as an action type is none, but these action types here cannot be changed those are permanent. So to recap here, the action IDs and descriptions, you guys will be able to change these as you feel fit. However, the action types are predefined and cannot be changed. You'll see those come into play once we drill into the total due window. So in this particular note, again, Bob said he was gonna make payment by early next week. So we chose to have this action type as promised to pay. The next thing I wanna do here then is assign this note to an action date. What this action date does is it leverages the note as a follow-up task. So if you set an action date here, that action date goes past due, it's automatically gonna launch this note into your task window, telling you that you need to follow up with that customer again, because those invoices have obviously not been paid. Now we're not just making these for past due invoices. Obviously that is the goal of collections is to collect on your past due and future invoices or receivables. But realistically, you guys can set any reminder to yourself in here by setting an action date and an action ID. The next thing here is if you create a note that isn't for a customer that you particular manage, this would allow you to assign it to the appropriate credit manager. And then you'll select the documents or invoices that this note pertains to. So if you drill into this, it's just gonna pull open that collections management transaction window again. All we need to do here 
is select the invoices that we want to attach for this particular customer. And this is all of the open invoices for that customer. So you can see I have two invoices selected there. Once you have those invoices selected, it's automatically gonna default this action amount here to the total amount of those invoices you selected. But you can change this action amount. It is editable. I like to tell my customers, if you're trying to collect from somebody and they tell you they can only make a partial payment on this, you can change this action amount to the amount that they said they're gonna pay. So for example here, let's say we reach out to Bob Fitz. Bob, Bob comes back and says, hey everyone, look, I can't pay that $3,000 today. However, I do have $2,000 that I can make as a down payment. You can change that action amount to the amount that Bob said he's gonna pay. That way when that $2,000 comes through, we can apply that payment inside of GP and then follow up on the remaining amount with a new or different note. You then have the status listed here. If the note is open, that means it has not been paid. Once that payment comes through, we can mark it as complete. And then if for any reason we need to cancel a note or if a note was canceled by one of our plans, we do have status reasons for that as well. And you might be asking yourself, do we really need to manually complete a note every time an invoice is being paid? No, you actually don't. We have a feature in this task window that we're gonna drill into here shortly that would automatically complete those notes as long as they're being fully applied in GP. So I'll go into more detail with that once we get into the task window, but just know you're not gonna have to manually complete each note every time an invoice is being paid. We have a feature that takes care of that for you. And then the last thing here is revisions. So anytime someone edits this note or makes a revision, we do keep a history trail of that. So you can drill back into this expansion arrow here. This would allow you to scroll back all the way to the original note here. You can see the revised dates. You can see the revised text. And you would also be able to determine if it was revised by a different collector. So that is the collection notes there. Again, one of the central focus features of collections management. Now hopping back into the main window here, the next thing I wanna do is drill into this total due window before we drill into the rest of these actions. Because again, this total due window is kind of tailored off of those notes that we just covered. If you notice in here, there's some really nice visual cues that we get. For starters, if there's this little information icon here, that means there is a note attached to that invoice. You also notice some letters next to these as well. So this P here is gonna denote that the invoice is promised for payment. If you look at the bottom here, we can see the total amount the that the customer is promising to pay. The cool thing about these promise payment notes is that let's say the action date goes past due and your customer did not submit payment on that, it's automatically gonna change this P into a B, which denotes a broken promise. So then you can easily see which invoices did not get paid on time. A couple more letters at the bottom here. D denotes that it's in dispute. S denotes special circumstance. Similarly here, you can see the amount disputed, the amount deemed special, and then the remaining amount that your customer owes that was never categorized. So this is where those action types come into play and you can inquire on specific groups like that. All right, now we're gonna drill into the rest of these actions here. Starting with this task window that I've talked quite a bit about. So again, this is really gonna be your to-do list for the day. What we've done is we've helped organize this window to help ensure prompt collections on your task. So you could come in here and you can actually focus in on your own individual tasks. If you leave this blank or open, it will show you all of your open tasks for your team. So maybe you got a collector or two who's out on vacation. You want to make sure you do the follow-ups for that user. This would allow you to work on other people's tasks as well. You can then set an action date here too allowing you to focus in on a specific day, given week, given month, really depends on how many tasks you want to be looking at. You can drill into any of these tasks here, review that note or description. You can manually mark them as complete by hitting this checkbox here. You can review all of your completed notes in this window. And then this is where that mark completed button comes into play. So you can see we give you a little description there, but as I previously mentioned, as long as your invoices are being fully applied inside of GP, 
collections management is going to recognize that and automatically complete these notes for you. Now we have some customers who are processing thousands of invoices a week, and it's not even realistic to manually complete each one of those invoices. So this feature here is very beneficial to those types of customers, uh, but honestly, everybody should be taking advantage of this. Again, as long as the pay uh, payment is being applied in GP, collections management will automatically recognize that. So that is your task list or to-do list, if you will. Next thing I want to show you here then is how to send a one-off email. So let's say we reach out to Bob Fitz here at Aaron Fitz Electrical. Bob comes back and says, hey, send us all of our past due invoices. We can quickly send a one-off email from this window here. So you can see here that you can put the customer's address ID right inside the window. We also have a collection letter here as well. And I was not expecting that to prompt me for a quick password. So let me just see if I can enter that in here. All right, so I don't password, unfortunately, but let's see if it can still, yep. Okay. All right. I got it to go there. So, all right. So we can add our collection email address here. You can manually type these in as well, copy in or blind copy anybody too. Now collections management, you have the ability to set up what we call a collection letter. Collection letters can easily be created for printing, faxing, or emailing to customers as we're doing here. And letters is kind of an older term, but if you think of them as a message template or an email template, we can use them in this window. So let me just go ahead and select one here. So by default, once you select that letter, then it's automatically going to populate that verbiage right in the body of the email. I also notice here, it's going to open up this transaction window down at the bottom, showing you all of the open invoices for that particular customer. So all you need to do here is select the invoices you would like to attach to this one-off email. Now, once you have those invoices selected, you're gonna click this blue refresh button and that's gonna do a few things for us. Number one, it's gonna list out those invoice details right in the body of the email. Number two, it's gonna print those invoices. And number three, it's going to attach them as PDF documents. Now, a common question I get here is, well, what if we need to attach something that isn't in GP, whether that be an invoice or just a document we want to send to that customer. We also have this attachments button down here at the bottom. This would allow you to browse through your file explorer and attach anything that you needed to from here as well. So that is the one-off email there. Let me go ahead and show you how to set up these collection letters though here quickly. So hopping into the sales area, we're gonna scroll down on this cards window. You actually notice a lot of the collection items are being set up here. We're going to focus in on the collection letters, though, and this is going to pull open your letter maintenance window. So this is completely blank, obviously, as you can see here. So you have a lot of freedom when it comes to creating these collection letters. However, we do predefine a couple of things in here for you. If you want, you can attach a specific group of invoices to this email. Let's do overdue invoices here for this example. We can copy in the customer salesperson if we want or blind copy them. And then we give you five major functions here to include right inside the body of the email. So for example, maybe we just put some customer information in there to start, make this letter sound a little more personal. We can then put in those invoice details. You notice here a lot of functions for the invoices. Ultimately, that is the goal of collections to collect on these. Well, let's stick with the overdue theme here. And then maybe we wrap it up there with some co collector information so the customer knows how to get a hold of us. So a very basic template that I've created here, but you really do have a lot of freedom when it comes to creating these letters. You can always come in and modify them as well, or just purely delete them. And for customers who are just getting started on collections, we do provide this sample data for you as well. This would populate a list of collection actions, letters, and collection plans to help get your team kick-started with collections management. Hopping back into the main window here, last feature I wanna show you from the actions is how to build a query. One of the first problems we've seen with customers doing their collecting today is finding the customers that they should be calling first. That's because most customers using GP today collect using an age trial balance where the customers are sorted alphabetically 
not by collector. So we can use this build queries window here to focus in on a specific group of customers that we want to work with. So we have two different options here, a standard query and an advanced query. The standard query here allows you to develop that list of customers based on a number of different restrictions. And these are the restrictions that we offer you. So you can focus in on a specific customer, maybe even a specific sales territory. You can focus in on a specific credit manager, balance that a customer owes, or if their balance is greater than their credit limit. We have different aging periods here, due dates, different notes, action types. And here's that priority level we discussed earlier. Here are the action types here, and then reminder levels. So just to give you an idea of how this works, let me just pull open one that I've created. So I'm looking for promise to pay greater than credit limit. So I have two restrictions set for this particular query. I'm looking for customers that have an action type that equals promise to pay, as well as a balance that's greater than their credit limit. So I have my two restrictions set here. Once you have those set, you're gonna run this query, click yes. And then at that time, it's gonna tell you how many records of yours it's searched and how many met the restrictions that you set. Of those, you can see their total balance and their overdue balance. Now I'm gonna click okay here and you're gonna watch this window disappear. That's because we're automatically saving that query for you. And you notice here, we're back on the main window and we went from viewing all customers to just those who are in that query or met the restrictions for that query. So the first thing I wanna do here then is hit this customer ID lookup and it's gonna show us the four customers that met those restrictions. I can also see their balance that's overdue and their total due balance. Now, once I have this query created, I have the option of sending these customers a letter, their invoices, or their statements all at the same time. So I'm going to hop back into the sales area here again. This time, we're going to scroll down on the transactions window. You notice here, we just built that query there. And directly below that, we have this feature called query letters. So by default, it's going to pull open the query that we just ran, promise to pay greater than credit limit. Here are the four customers that met those restrictions. From this window, I can send them a letter, their statements, or their invoices. And then I would email that from this window here. So I hesitate to call this an automated process because as you saw there, it obviously requires a little bit of manual work, but it also helps eliminate the one-off process as well. If there's a specific group of customers that really need to be receiving the same thing. So for example here, let's say you come in and create a query that says, show me all of my customers that has an invoice that's 90 days past due or older. So you run that query and you get a list of 20 customers back. Rather than sending those 20 customers the same one-off email over and over and over again, you can use this window here and send them all at the same time. So for example here, let's say we do that and say, all right, they're gonna get their final letter here. You can actually build these letters in real time and then review them as well. And you're gonna see these details change here based off that specific customer's information. So then you can review those quickly and then process that by sending out that email. So again, uh, not an automated process, but it does eliminate the one-off process if a specific group of customers need to be receiving the same thing. I'll hopping back into the main window here. One more thing with these queries is an advanced query. And basically what we've done here is allowed your team to use SQL script to, uh, to build a specific query. So the standard query here is kind of limited by the restrictions that we have. So if there's a specific group of criteria or customer data that you want to focus in on, you can use SQL script to build a query as well. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up the first part of today's demonstration. At this time, we're gonna transition over to the automation process. And we're gonna start with that collection plan that I pulled open earlier here. Let me just give you an example of how that would work. So I have three different examples for you guys here today. The first one is a good customer plan. What these plans are is step, steps or actions that execute action, or excuse me, steps or workflows that execute actions based off your customer's oldest outstanding invoice. So we have a few different plans, like I said, this is a good customer plan here. 
this might be something that you assign to your customers who are notorious for making their payments on time, more of a relaxed plan, if you will. Now, for those who don't make their payments on time, we got a high risk plan here as well. We're gonna follow up with them a little more frequently. And then I have a regular collection plan here as well. Maybe this is the standard plan that we use by default to assign to all of our new customers. Now, again, these plans are gonna be executed here based off the customer's oldest outstanding invoice. So the first step in this plan here is actually happening seven days before the invoice is considered overdue. What's happening is we're executing an action here called soon due. Now I can drill into any of these actions here and review what's gonna happen at this level or step. So I review into this, I say, okay, it's a soon due action, invoices are coming due, and it's a letter that we're gonna send the customer. So I can drill into this letter ID, and you can see here it pulls open that letter maintenance window that we just covered a few minutes ago. In this particular letter, we're letting them know they have invoices with us that will soon be considered overdue. All the invoices we attach to this email include all invoices not overdue. And then in the body of the email here, you can see we include all invoice details along with some collector information. So you can see a lot of verbiage in here. Again, you have a lot of freedom when it comes to these collection letters. And this is how you would attach that to your automated collection plan. Now, this will take your customer through the steps in this plan as long as their invoice has not been paid. So five days past due, we send a reminder. 14 days, we're scheduled to make a phone call. 30 to 45 days, a couple more letters, so on and so forth, coming into 90 days past due, the final action. So what, once your customers reach the last step in their plan, we basically give you two options, and that's called at last step. So number one, we can keep repeating that last step. Maybe we just send the customer an invoice every 30 days or a reminder every 30 days, telling them that their account has been put on hold. Or we just stop seeing that next action. Now maybe we send them to a credit agency at that time. Now, kind of a third and unwritten rule is moving them to a new collection plan. You can see here, you have all the way up to 20 steps. So maybe up to step 10, 15, or even 20, you say, let's move them to a new collection plan. That is not something that's done automatically by our product, but at the very least, it would be a reminder to you internally saying, you know what, this customer here is 120 days past due. They're not really responding to the regular plan. Let's go ahead and put them on a high risk plan and follow up with them more frequently. The last thing here is the minimum amount due. So this is allowing you to basically set a floor here for each of your plans. And if your customer's invoice does not meet, or is below this minimum amount due, it will not take them through the steps in this plan. Now you can change that amount for each plan that you have set up, and you can even zero that out if you want to as well. So the question is, okay, we assign customers to these plans here, but how are we really executing these actions? We're gonna do that from the plan processing window. So a little bigger window here, bear with me, but what we're looking at is all of our customers on a collection plan scheduled to get their next actions. So I can sort these in a number of different ways. I can look at all of our customers with a balance, all of our overdue customers. I can sort by a collector or query that I've built, or maybe I just say, hey, show me everyone who's at the end of their collection plan. Let's do overdue customers here today. Now you can see it's gonna show you all of your customers who have an invoice that's overdue. Now you could filter them by a specific customer. You could filter them by a specific collection plan, the last action they received, or the next action they're scheduled to get. So for example, let's do all overdue customers on a high risk collection plan. There you can see it's only gonna populate those who meet that specific criteria I could then bulk send all of those customers their next actions by clicking process all customers. But honestly, everyone, the ultimate goal of this window here is to be able to review all of your customers and the actions are scheduled to get. So I just change this back to all here. Let's say you're running through this list. You go, hey, wait, 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 Pacific Digital. I just spoke with them on the phone yesterday. You can also select customers in here individually like I just did. And it's gonna show you their documents or invoices that are due for payment in the middle of this window. So all you need to do here is pick and choose the invoice you want to send to this customer. You notice we have this letter text down here at the bottom as well. 
maybe you just say, hey, James, I know we spoke on the phone yesterday. Just wanted to send you those invoices that are past due. You can modify that and then process that customer at that time. And maybe you go, you know what? I just spoke with Pacific Digital here. I don't need to send them another reminder. You can also delete that customer out of the queue as well, but that only removes them temporarily. How temporary am I talking? Let's say we leave this window here, go do our normal day-to-day -day GP activity, come back later that evening or even the next day, click overdue customers. There you can see Pacific Digital was repopulated because again, we wanna make sure that they do get followed up with on their next action. Again, the ultimate goal here, review all of your customers, review the actions they're scheduled to get, and then process all of them at the same time. We're gonna give you one final summary report here, essentially breaking down each collection plan and the actions that are scheduled to go out. But let's say you have a customer who's scheduled to get their next action and you don't have an email address set up for them in GP. We are gonna warn you to go back and set them up with an email address. Otherwise, down at the bottom here, you do have the option to send those who do have an email, print those who do not. In that case, you'd have to send the printed ones through the mail or however you wanted to contact that customer. So that is the collection plans there or the automated process. Just got two more quick features here today to wrap up the demonstration. First is gonna be this receivable summary inquiry window. This allows your managers or really anybody to review your accounts receivable information. You can do this by a specific credit manager or collector. You can do it by a query that you've built or a parent company. Or you could just leave it blank here like I have, click calculate, and that's gonna show you your entire accounts receivable information. So the top portion here, that's just your standard receivable summary information. But the middle portion here is going to be the summary information on your collection management notes. So you can see here how many disputed notes you have, how many promise to pay notes. And then the two most important fields here are at the bottom showing notes past contact date saying, hey, we got 27 notes that are already past due. Let's go follow up with these customers right away here. And then the most important field, overdue documents not on a note saying, hey, these are past due and we don't know why. So you could come in here, assign these to new collectors for follow-up, or maybe you just kind of use it as your call down list and assign them to new collection notes. The bottom portion here, that's just your customer's aging. And then the last feature here to wrap up the demonstration is your day's sales outstanding calculator, allowing you to track your DSO over time. You can pick a specific period here and calculate that DSO. You can also calculate DSO per customer. That shows up back on the collections main window. I'm not gonna be doing that here today, but just know that is an option. Once you click calculate, you can see it does it fairly quickly for you, showing your sales for that period, average sales per day, your sales that are outstanding, which translates then into your day sales outstanding. Now you can manually add this to the bottom here by clicking add to log, but by default, every time you log into GP and use collections management, we are going to track that DSO for you. With that being said, that wraps up today's collections management demonstration. First and foremost, just want to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to view collections. I do appreciate that. And thank you to the Optimus team for having professional advantage on here today. I am pulling open some contact details here. If you do have any questions after we get off the call, certainly don't hesitate to reach out to me, uh, but work very closely here with the Optimus team as well. So feel free to shoot them an email or whatever you're looking for, and we can certainly work together there too. But let's go ahead and see if any questions have come across at this time.